Now I'm going to face off the front. I'm going to use a bowl gouge because uh, I think that's the fastest way to do that. Slicing and a peeling cut simultaneously. I want it slightly concave. Now if I didn't have the appropriate side Forstner bit, I could certainly come in here with a box box scraper. Uh, that's, a, that's an option. But I've got a 1 and 1 8 inch uh, Forstner bit that I use for uh, part of my process for uh, tapping uh, threaded, threaded glue blocks. So uh, this, is, this is certainly faster if you were doing several of them. So we'll turn this at an appropriately slow speed. Switch to a lower belt setting to get the appropriate torque, but we'll see. Go slow. This end grain is tough. Now, if I was doing several of these, I'd have gone ahead and changed the uh, torque on on the belt to a lower setting. But for only one, I managed. Sometimes my Nova tends to be a little harder to remove, so I, I made this little tool with this bar in it that goes into this set screw hole. And then I've got to hold the the adapter, and, and, it, and it breaks it loose very easily. And the, the, the jaw set that I'm using, these pin jaws, uh, will work very nicely. Other jaw sets will work fine, but they need to be a small, very small jaw set. And this just fits in there. I'm going to push it all the way in, not not use the dovetail uh, feature. This is right. Now we're going to finish shaping the roof of this birdhouse. Now I'm going to shape the outside with a half inch spindle gouge. I could use a bowl gouge, I could use a 3 8 inch spindle gouge, but this one will work just fine. Get the speed up a little bit. In this case, maximum for the belt setting, close to it, almost 1700. Anchor the tool. I say ride the bevel. We really mean float the bevel. Uh, not pressure along the whole edge, but you're going to raise it just a little bit and support that cutting edge with the bevel. Now we're going to come in from the side here. This perpendicular comes straight in. Start that incline. Cold cut. I did one of these recently and put some texturing on it, so I think I'll try that texturing again. Texturing tool that I'm going to use. I'm going to first uh, put a bit of a cove here. I'm going to use what I call the Dremel Burr texturing tool. Uh, I've got plans for this. I've got a video on it. Uh, you can check that out. But I'm going to come in here and this, this will rotate in that cove. Need to slow the speed down. Oh, maybe 600, 500, somewhere in that area. Not too fast. Anchor the tool, get it in here, and just let it do its job. And that's left a nice swirling uh, de detail. I'm going to round over this edge just a bit. And around over the bottom. I'm going to come back in here and pick up that, that cut. I'm going to look at this detail here and see do I need to to add a bit of uh, V cut there on the side, and I think I will. So I'll just open this up, switch it on this, and use this. Come in here and just put a tiny little V cut right there on each end and kind of frame it. Okay, now I can pick up that cut just beyond that framing. Yep. 
want you to notice how my body moves on this cut. I'm anchoring this and using my whole body to shape it. I'm not using my hands because that way I get the smoothest cut. Anchor the tool, ride the bevel, and then I just slowly twist my body around. Because the angle of this cut, my right foot is slightly forward of my left. Just using my body. this little cove tool. It's kind of a negative right scraper to get rid of a little minor tool mark. And as I showed you before, I use this little Doug Thompson tool. You just couldn't see it very well. I'm going to make this a little rounder here on this, this feed at the top. I'm using a little sanding butter. Uh, sanding lubricant works great. If you haven't tried wet sanding, you ought to give it a try. I've got a link to a video up here. Small items like this, uh, I like to use the finish on the lathe, so I'm using a friction, uh, shellac based friction polish. There's any number of them, uh, but it goes very, very fast. Use a couple of coats. Put it on with the lathe not running. After you do it a little bit, run the speed up, and it blows off or, or it uh, flashes off the alcohol. Be careful not to touch it though, because you can get fixed. Uh, fingerprints on it. Uh, give it 24 hours to cure before you get your fingerprints all over it. Those have been watching my videos for a while, probably seen this tip before, but anytime I have a chuck or a spindle adapter that I get stuck, I tend to use this this plumbing uh, spud wrench or it's called slip and lock nut wrench. Uh, it, it's not a great uh, great wrench, but it does work very well for loosening a variety of sizes and it's fairly flat and as a result easy to slip in a drawer. I like to use contrasting wood. I found a scrap of box elder so I'm going to mark centers. Just eyeball it. I'm not doing any fancy measuring or anything. It's going to be round. It's plenty large. for. Now how tight is tight? If you grasp the hand wheel uh, it should be fairly firm without slipping. That, that's tight enough. Not, not that you couldn't possibly wrench the thing loose, but you know, just, just very snug. I think that's probably going to be just about right for the tenon. Use my B and parting tool. Just come straight down. this to be about one and three quarter inches so I need to come down almost a half an inch so I'll just use my spindle roughing gouge and finish rounding it. Now I need to, to drill a hole in here to reduce the uh, hollow. Now you may recall I drilled out this recess with a 1 and 1 8 inch hole so I'm using a 7 8 of an inch uh, to, to hollow this out. I've got it marked with tape and this will be uh, this will give me a good 1 8 inch uh, to be able to shape, uh, shape down the, the walls. So now I need to put up a bit of a tenon on there to, to go inside here. As usual, I'll use my beading and parting tool for that. Uh, we want that tenon to be one and one eighth inch, so I've got to eyeball about where that is. Uh, about an eighth inch larger than that, uh, that, that hole. Get the speed going a little bit. Snap it in just a bit. back just a little bit, get a little tighter mechanical fit, maybe a sixteenth of an inch. On roughly the same slope. Let's check that out now. And that's nice. Nice and snug. Alright, now I want to decide what the body shape is and I need to double check how deep 
this thing is. Transfer the inside to the outside, similar to making a box. So I'll transfer the inside to the outside. There's the bottom. And I want to come about maybe an eighth of an inch for margin of error. That's when I start taking it in this shape. It'll be like this. And then I'm going to pick up the cut here. Notice how it's about 45 degrees across my body. This is uh, straight on, uh, perpendicular. And then I just... Because this is a spindle, I've got to go from large to small, so I've got to come in from the other side. And then meet in the middle. thicker than I want it to be. I might hollow some more from the inside, but I need to decide which side the perch is going to be on. So that there's the color. There's where the perch is going to be. Let's go ahead and mark the, the nesting, nesting hole. And drill it using a uh, brad point drill bit so it centers in that little hole. And I switch to a 1 8 inch. That's a 5 16 Now I'm going to switch to a 1 8 inch. And again, we need to mark that. So I'm just going to come down below it a, a, a bit, trying to center on the hole. And mark that. All right, this wall's a little thick, and I can see it's thick because I can see through this nesting hole, so I want to thin it out some, make it lighter, make it look a little nicer. Uh, there are several tools I could use. I could use a negative right scraper. Uh, I could use this, this Hunter cupped carbide, which is significantly different than a flat carbide, but, but uh, since some of y'all use carbide, I'll, I'll try this round carbide on this. The, the hunter would give me a nice slicing cut. This is going to be a scrape. But for the inside, nobody's going to see it. I'm not even going to bother to sand it, so it really won't make any difference. I'm going to go to the bottom where it's thicker until it touches. Get back it out. That's not bad. That's thinned it out quite a bit. The hole looks a little nicer that way. I think I'm going to concave this in even more. And just for laughs, I'm going to use this round carbide tool for that. Although this is pretty soft wood, so I'm afraid it's liable to give me some tear out. But let's let's give it a try. I did get some tear out, what I was expecting. I'm going to switch to this hunter since I've got it out, and let's see how, how that does. And this one, you got to turn it on its side for a slicing cut. And there's another direction. And that got rid of all of the tear out created by the uh, flat carbide scraper. My half inch spindle gouge could just remove some excess wood. I'm going to turn a little finial on the end. 
and I cut a little detail at the, at the bottom. Uh, I need to give myself a little more room here. Get the speed up. And then swinging my body, my arms. Cut that little V cut with a skew. Nothing cuts a V cut as well as a, a skew. And I'm going to switch to a little smaller detail gouge, make it just a little easier to cut that coat. Deep cold Z drama. So I'm going to make this deep. Scoop and ice cream come into the middle. Okay, and then we're gonna round this side over. Make it mirror the top. Okay. body. I think I'll come back. Yeah, I like that cold on that detail. Yeah, okay. Just shifting my body to make these cuts. Well, I pushed my luck, torn out a few fibers, fibers, but nothing that can't be dealt with with sandpaper, but I, I like the shape. I've already turned a little perch. Well, crap. Boy, every year goes by, it gets harder and harder to bend over. So I've turned this nice little uh, perch. Details really matter on these type of small projects where people are going to hold it up and look at it. So, so I put this perch in. It's clear that the, it's too too snug, so I'm going to use this little plumber's reamer. I got these on my Amazon store. These are great little projects for making this kind of joinery, getting these holes to fit better. Goes down to an eighth of an inch, and then that fits in much much nicer with a little CA glue. So details matter. Uh, pay attention to details. Turning a perch is much better than using a, a bamboo skewer. Adding a little texture is a nice feature. Coves, curves, no flats.